Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're going to be doing some work on this co-op ARD 1.1. So in my last video, I had mentioned that I was planning to take this on some mountains over in Colorado and other places eventually, and I needed some lower gearing. Right now it has just 34 in the, in the back and 34 in the front, giving you a one-to-one -one ratio, which of course, if you're strong enough, is totally fine. But for me, especially living down here in Florida, that's totally not fine. I need much lower gears. So I had mentioned in my other video that I would get a bigger cassette back here, like a 40 tooth. Somebody in the comments though, in that review video, mentioned that why don't you just change the, the chain ring and crank set out and that'll actually be losing weight off, off the bike rather than gaining weight with the bigger cassette. So let me show you the crank set that I'm gonna try to work with. It's definitely not as pretty as the current one. This is actually probably a much older crank set from a, a mountain bike. It is 170 uh, millimeter length uh, cranks and the chain rings are much, much smaller as you can see. This is a 36 and the smallest one here is a 34 and we have a 24, so it's a 24, 36. I would like the large one to actually be a little bit bigger, but this is what I have right now. I could probably source a larger one, a 38 or 40 if I wanted, but um, I think this will do okay for now. It will look a little bit funny, but it will give me a lot of range. I did some calculations and this should give me on the low end, uh, like 19 point, let's say 19 something gear inch using the 24 and the 34. If I were to be uh, just using a 42 in the back how I'd previously planned, it still would have given me like a 22 uh, gear inch ratio or gear inch, which by the way, if you don't know what it means, is every time you, means every time you pedal your cranks one rotation, your bike will go, well, 19 inches if I'm running this and 21, 22 if I have the 42 in the back with all this as it is. And I happen to know from, from quite a bit of riding that once you get down to around 20, that's really good. Like that, you can climb pretty much anything. That's on the low end. Of course, on the high end, it's more like uh, 80 or 100 is usually what I'm looking for. And I think with this, even with this, I think I'll be right around 80. So it should be uh, just enough. I'm not going to be accelerating a lot downhill and you might not run in a, uh, be able to ride in a group real well where their speeds could be up, um, you know, 35 plus kilometers an hour, but I don't do any of that. So I think this should work for me. Anyway, let's get it installed. Now, one thing I may have to deal with is the fact that the chain may be too long. So I may be forced to shorten the chain up a bit, but let's try it as it is first. Now this company Capri Tools contacted me and said that they wanted to send me a bunch of tools and I didn't have to review them and it's not sponsored or anything so this is this is the one of the tools that I ordered. Let's see how it works. Sorry I'm having a little bit of trouble. I actually fell on my bike a few weeks ago and I think I, I uh, maybe fractured my wrist so I'm having a little bit of trouble just um, yeah, it really hurts to press down right now. By the way, I've actually hurt my wrist recently by falling off my bike, so uh, I'm having a lot of trouble pressing down with it. I think it's fractured or something. It really hurts when I put pressure on it. Oh wow, that's super tight. Hmm. Okay, I'm gonna try a little bit of a different approach here. Taking the bike off of the stand. I'm thinking I can maybe press down better. Okay, it moved. <laughs> okay, that's good. Gosh, I really didn't want to break this uh, new tool I just got. There it goes. Wow, that was way tight. And that, of course, doesn't you know remove the crank. That it's that's just the pressing uh, the pressing bolt. Uh, the crank is still fitted onto the spindle. Well, thank goodness I had this long T-shaped eight millimeter Allen key because I don't think I would have got enough leverage with the normal one to be able to do that. So Capri Tools isn't a uh, bike tools company. They're more like car mechanic tools. Um, but I told them they ought to get into it. They ought to get into the bike stuff. So they didn't have a crank puller or anything like that. All right, the crank came loose pretty easily. I hadn't crashed on my bike in so long and I just rode to Publix the one day I rode without my helmet and uh, I was leaving the 
the parking lot and one of my handlebars snagged on a sign and went over the handlebars, landed on my side and on my wrist and everything. Yeah, it's pretty bad. I mean, it wasn't that bad, but... Okay, there we go. There's our crank, our uh, drive side crank and chain rings. I don't have a garage, so I'm working outside right now, but uh, this actually isn't going too bad. And being I waited until about 6.30, I don't know what time it is right now, I took my watch off, but uh, the temperature isn't too hot either, so it's actually pretty nice. You just have to watch out for the, for the temperature and the sunlight. Anyway, let's see uh, what the weight difference is between the old crank set and the new crank set. Okay, it's a little hard to see. There we go. So this crank set weighs 870 grams. The new one, which is actually older, is weighing in at 617. What did I say, 870? So, wow, that's huge. That's actually 253 grams, 250 gram uh, savings. That's actually shockingly large. Okay, back to the bike. Let's see if we can fit the new crank, crank set. I'm gonna use the old stubborn bolts. Assuming that fits, yeah, it does. I mean, I know full well this is going to make the bike a lot uglier, no question about it, but it should also make it, at least for me, more functional. Now that spindle already had grease on it from before, so I didn't even, it looked like it was enough to, so I didn't even add any to it. Okay, that feels pretty good. Okay, for sure we're going to have to move the front derailleur down. And then one thing I'm kind of concerned about is this water bottle mount. Um, I think we're going to actually have to go below it, so we're going to have to take it off completely. I just loosely uh, tightened that on. Actually, that looks like that might work just fine, I hope. I'm trying to eyeball it to make sure it's uh, parallel. I think it actually is. That's about as high as it can go right now. So it's kind of weird, you have to either be that high or that low. Hmm, not great. But let's see if it'll work. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten it down. Got it snug down. Let's see if we can get this onto a ring. All right, we are now in our small ring, which is correct, because remember this cable is totally uh, loose. Okay, I spent some time messing around with it and Basically, I wasn't able to have the derailleur underneath the water bottle uh, mount, so I ended up putting it above, which does give it a huge gap here, which definitely isn't ideal, but it does seem to be working. Um, right now, I haven't adjusted the chain length, which I think I'm gonna need to do in just a minute, but it does shift. Unfortunately, the spike didn't come with a chain brake, so I have to break it didn't have a master link or whatever it's called. Yeah, master link. So I'm gonna have to break the chain the old way. And I don't have one that I can install onto it either right now. Whoa, okay, that came off way easier than usual. So we'll keep this part completely, we'll completely remove this right here. Now this time we'll just go all the way through, getting rid of the pin and everything, because we'll be using the pin from the other one. All right, I got two of the links off and it's definitely better, but I almost think I should have gone further with it. Right now we're in the middle of the, uh, middle of the um, cassette in the back, moving up to the top. There's your climbing gear. Sounds pretty nice, nice and quiet. And you'll start coming down from that. And it starts making some noise and you'll probably want to go over into your big big ring. Now it's nice and quiet again. Yeah, that's pretty good. Well, I'm gonna put the pedals on and give it a ride and we'll see if it's actually any good. But I think, I think that'll work just fine and that's pretty much gonna um, finish this video, I guess all I wanted to say is and show is that you can, uh, rather than putting a giant cassette in the back, you can actually, if you want to get, you know, better climbing gears, you can actually change the chain, chain ring in the front um, and it'll save you maybe 200, 250 grams. So that's pretty nice. Uh, be careful about water bottle 
mounts because that's not ideal. Let's see. Uh, I'll, I'll leave in the comments whether this ends up working long term or not if I start having a lot of chain drops and stuff like that. And if that's the case, not sure really, really what I'll be able to do about it. Maybe, maybe even going up to a larger, uh, large chain ring will help. Maybe going up to a 38 or a 40 will help that retention. That's the only thing I'm a little bit worried about is if it's going to have any chain retention issues being this high off. But um, let me know in the comments. What do you think? Is that is this going to work? What do you think about the whole idea? And uh, anyway, thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.